that uh, Jay it's brought out. Sli- it's slightly better. Yeah, I, I still well, don't still, like that title. I, yeah, it's the overall design is still not as good, but I do like that he's paying homage to the original. Now I tell you a title that I do like the design of. This beautiful right here with the diamond studs right here. We got the five with, wrapped around with the stars, the embossing. I mean, classic bolts, snaps, you know, no Velcro. This isn't a child's toy. This is a champion's belt. You hear that? Real. everybody and welcome to another episode of the five star jobbers podcast i'm cody and i what am the inaugural five star champion where in the world did you get that i bought it for myself because you know i'm a man of means and i thought to myself john you are a champion at life. I mean, you know, corporate champion, champion of the people. I mean, I've got a beautiful wife. I've got five beautiful kids, a beautiful home with lots of land on it. I mean, there's no reason that I can't just be the champion. You I know? will say that that title looks pretty... Pretty spiffy. It uh, it's pretty beautiful. Got the logo on and everything. Don't touch it. What? Don't touch it. No touchy. Well, it's the five star jobbers championship. I'm one of the five star jobbers. You are a jobber, but I'm the five star champion. Are you serious? You're not gonna let me hold it. I'm gonna tell you something that your 13 year old girlfriend told you. You can't touch it. So you get to buy a title that has the five star jobbers on it. But yet your co-host, who's also one of the five-star jobbers, can't hold it. I don't understand what the confusion is here. Seriously? Yes. So what, I mean, what, gonna... what, what have you done? Are you kidding me? I mean... The people love me, too. The people are stupid. Like most every, most everybody who loves you, and you have to admit this to me, can't walk, talk, and breathe at the same time without oh having to think about it. Oh my gosh, John! I want to apologize to everybody that's listening right now. If you're watching this, I apologize as well. You're seriously going to parade around a championship that has our logo on it, but yet you won't let your co-host hold it. You haven't earned it. You haven't earned the right to hold it yet. What have you done to earn it? You just bought the title for yourself. So you just you just answered your own question. Oh my gosh! Whatever. Anyway, guys, it's good to be the champ. Aside from all that, man, that looks that's a beautiful title. Anyway, aside from all that, thank you guys for watching and thank you for listening. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit subscribe if you're watching us on YouTube right now, and go ahead and follow us on all streaming platforms. We're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, anywhere that podcasts are streamed. We are there. Also, you can check us out on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. And YouTube, you can see all of our commentary content as well as episodes from our podcast. And I want to let you guys know about some upcoming events that are going to be going on pretty soon that you're going to want to check out. First off, October 12th, that's this Saturday, the Guardians Legacy presents The Fallen. It'll be at Rosenwald High School Gym in Panama City, Florida. Doors open at 6 and the bell time is at 7. If you want ticket information, go to www.theguardianslegacy.com. Also, October 16th, Hope Championship Wrestling will be at Tabernacle Baptist Church in Vidalia, Georgia. The doors open at 6, and it's a free event. Free 99! It is free 99. You can come and check out great professional wrestling and also hear a great message. Definitely want to check that out. October 16th, Tabernacle Baptist Church, Hope Championship Wrestling will be at Vidalia, Georgia. Do you get free onions, too? I don't know. Maybe you fast nicely. It's Vidalia, Georgia. Like, Vidalia onions. I mean, it's very possible. I want some sweet onions. Who, who doesn't? A little bit of butter on the pan. Oh, yeah. 
I like that we were in sync on that. <laughs> uh, October 26th, Kraken <laughs> Pro Wrestling will be at the Mott Lippman Gym in Tipton, Georgia. It'll start at 7 p.m. If you want ticket information, go to their social media page for more information. Also, a little bit later, but it's coming up very quickly. November 9th, Solid Rock Championship Wrestling is back in Thomasville, Georgia. It is their ninth annual anti-bullying event. If you haven't been to this event in the past, you are missing out. And this year, you do not want to miss out on it at all. It'll be at Thomas County Middle School in Thomasville, Georgia. Doors open at 5.30 and the bell time is at 6. For more ticket information, you can go to their social media page or contact Jimmy Peoples for more information as well. You don't want to miss out on this because there are some marquee individuals that are going to be at this event. For sure. University of Georgia alum and NFL star Ray Drew will be at this event. Go dogs! The former first lady of professional wrestling, Missy Hyatt, Ooh. will be at this event. And to cap it all off, former WWE superstar, current NWA star, the masterpiece, Chris Masters, Ooh. will be at this event. Chris Masters, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, come on. Anti bullying. Okay. I'm not a fan of anti bullying. I'm actually a fan of bullying. It's a great way to like let people know who's, you know, strong and who's weak and who's right and who's wrong. This is not a reflection of the five star jobbers in any way, shape, or form. This is solely based on the church of John Pipkin. But uh, but the event is amazing no matter what. And I mean the fact that we got Chris, we have Chris Masters, Missy Hyatt. Uh, Ray Drew, on, on top of the rest of the card, that's going to be amazing with you know local stars and celebrities. I, this this is going to be an incredible. This event. is going to be an amazing event, and in Thomasville, Georgia, I mean that's a hop, skip, and jump away from anybody in the Tallahassee area, or I say if you're in the Albany area, Thomasville, Georgia, it's right there. I mean it's there's no there's no excuse to not make this event. No, go and get your tickets now and find out more information about this if you want. Go check out this event, but. A lot of great things happening, and we want to talk about something that happened just recently. We did reviews, or we did predictions on it and everything, but we want to talk about black, uh, yeah, easy for me to say, bad blood. Did you get some bad blood in your mouth? I don't know. I'm not sure what it was. Yeah. But anyway, bad blood happened this past weekend, and, you know, I will, say, I will say this. There was, I would say, two good matches. Well, I take that back. One really good match, and the rest were just kind of there. I I agree. Uh, the but the situation here is is that there was one amazing match, and it went first, so it made every other match not seem as good as it probably would have seemed had the best match been last. Absolutely. We I mean we talked about it, uh, you know, last week. And we said the Hell in a Cell match absolutely needed to be the last match on the card. It was the first match on the card, which immediately when it happened, I didn't like because it immediately let me know that there was going to be a shock ending. Yeah. So I wasn't shocked when the shock ending came. And then what we just said, the main event should be the match that's the best match on the card because it sucks with the best match on the card comes first and that everything else seems ho-hum. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah. CM Punk and Drew McIntyre went out there and they had probably one of the best Hell in a Cell matches I've seen in the last 10, 15, maybe even 20 years. By far. Um, everything that they did was brutal. Um, it made sense. It wasn't a spot just for spot's sake. See, and that's the thing that I was worried about with this match. I was worried that it was just going to be another spot fest where oh, they do all these we crazy just got moves. Done seeing, we just got done seeing the world's worst cage match with yeah. AEW between Hangman and Swerve. Right, but it's like you said, like everything in this match was perfect. Like it, like you said, it all made sense. Mm -hmm. It all referred back to different parts throughout their rivalry. And there were some, there were some spots here that was like, it, like you said, it wasn't even. It wasn't even something that like they had to orchestrate. It was how they were willing to put their bodies into the match entirely. Like to me, the most brutal spot in the entire match. I think I know where you're going. Is the Miss Claymore? Yes. Where Drew, where McIntyre lands on the small of his back on the edge of the mm. of the chairs. I was sitting there with my wife, and I like I popped for that one. Yeah. And she was like, time. she was she was like, what's so bad about that? I was like. <laughs> did, like, did you not see what just happened? Uh, well, she and I get it. She didn't get it. Like, she's she was like, you know, you know, she understands. Like, you you learn to fall and land, and yeah, he takes a great flat back, but 
the small of his back still hit the edge of a metal corner. Yeah. Like, I don't care if the stairs aren't, you know, 500 pounds. Hitting the edge of, like, I mean, have you ever, you're hitting the edge have you of ever, metal. Have you ever kicked the edge of your bed? Yeah. With your shin? Mm-hmm. Multiple okay. times. Now, now have a 230-pound dude fall from the air and land on the small of his back in the corner. That... I would equate that to probably like breaking your shin on the trailer hitch. Yeah, no, that was painful to watch. I'm sure it was painful to pull off. Yeah, but it was like you know, it, they didn't need to go out of the cage. They didn't need to go to the top and have crazy spots. And I mean, they did pull. And I will say, I'll say through my word, you know, because I, I, I talked about this on AEW. I don't like the screwdrivers. I don't. They didn't use screwdrivers technically. They used wrenches. Right. Um, and they, you know, they used the wrench kind of like to dig into the head. Um, right, they basically like but, use those to make to bring out color. But the but, but the color on Drew, I think, was a hard way. Um, I Punk hits him with that toolbox, and I think the corner of the toolbox hits him on because it's yeah. not it's not where you typically see color. It was like on the more forehead. like towards the hairline. He had or six, somewhere there. No, he got sixteen staples in his head after okay. the after the match. So oh. I, I think that was. I think he was supposed to get color, but I don't think he was supposed to get that much color. I mean, either this way. This was the, the bloody, bloody, like, I haven't seen this much blood, not just in in WWE in a while, but just in general. Um, because, like I said, this is a hard way. So it wasn't, it wasn't like, you know, a small laceration that they hit on and, and you know, it bleeds over time. And No, this was like the top of his head. Say, he had to get 16 staples put into his head. Yeah. Um, this was a brutal match. Um, and I will and, say this. Like, I, I know a lot of people have different opinions on CM Punk and Drew McIntyre, but the fact that they were able to go out there and do that, and you just alluded to this earlier, but the fact that they were willing to do all of that in order to get across the story and yep. in order to finish out that match and to put on something like that, I give Drew McIntyre a ton of props, mm-hmm. and I give CM Punk a lot of props for it as well. Yep, they did an absolutely phenomenal job, and like I said, that was well deserving of the main event spot. Yeah, no, it it one hundred. I think that that was. I get the booking. I understand the booking, and I'm definitely not. I, I, I don't have the experiences of, of a booker to sit there and uh, you know question Paul Levesque or any of the people that are putting that show together. But I just, I honestly feel like had that been the main event, a lot of the other matches wouldn't have seen so ho-hum. Because at the end of the day, for me, yeah, the only two the only two matches of note were the Hell in a Cell match and then the, the tag team match between Roman and Cody and Jacob Fatu and Sola Sokoa. You have the return of Jimmy Uso. And then we have the big... You know the the what what, what I was I knew it was going to happen. Yeah, you know, I, yeah, I, and, you, and you called it. I, I, you I called talked it. about it possibly happening last week, and like I said, the minute that they that they announced that the Hell in a Cell was the first match, I knew the Rock was going to come. Yeah, so and that I, I should have caught on to that. But. So what irritated me there was is just that instead of it being a shock, and it would have been a shock at the opening of the show, and it would have been something you could have talked about for the rest of the show. Right. But they ended it with that. And like I said, because they started the Hell in a Cell, I knew it was going to happen, so I wasn't as excited. Well, here's here's one thing I'll disagree with you on. Like, I think if they had switched the main event and the first match up, I still think the rest of the matches would have gone ho-hum. I, that, so? that, that's just my opinion. Because, I mean, you look at the other matches. I mean, the Liv Morgan and Rhea Ripley match. They were was, having a good match. It was a the good ending match, sucked. But the ending is what ruined it. Well, the, then, end, like, the end, like, I didn't like... So, first of all, I didn't like the whole thing with Dom, because it's like... You can see the thing tied to his foot. Yeah. So you. It's like first okay, of something's all, they, about to happen. They didn't really show him at any point how he got out of the cage. No. It's just at one point. Well, I think on the, commentary they like alluded to him like picking the lock or whatever. I'm sorry. But I'm that, sorry. That, like, that does not. They, no. They need to show him trying to get out of the cage. Every time I, they showed Dom, he was sitting there on his butt, not moving, looking like he was afraid to get up. Right. Which I get it, like he's playing into the whole I'm afraid of heights, I'm a chicken ass heel, like but we should have seen him like pull something out of his sock or pull something out of his coat or whatever to pick the to, if he was gonna pick the lock, they need to show him picking the lock. Right. But we don't get to see that. But then then he falls and I know exactly why we don't get to see why he's doing anything because they didn't want to show at any point or get caught on camera with wherever he put his foot in a cuff. 
Because then he falls, and he's, he, it's not he's hanging by the bar or he's hanging by the chain. Because you can see it's not the chain. It's, no. It is There is a rope that his foot is connected to. So that sucked. And then Raquel Rodriguez, I don't have a problem with Raquel Rodriguez coming in. Like, she has a receipt for Rhea Ripley. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. But Raquel Rodriguez coming in and, and, and live winning, live losing by disqualification, it would have been way better if Raquel would have came in and behind the referee's back would have done something to cost Rhea the match and for Liv to go over clean. Yeah. Now you've got on one on you know we we're recording this on a Tuesday so Raw's already happened. Now they're already talking about oh Liv she's looking at she's looking at Nia in Crown Jewel. Rhea still owed a match now because she didn't lose she didn't lose she won but she didn't get the title because she won by disqualification. So common sense tells us that Rhea Ripley's not done with Liv Morgan. No. Um, this rivalry is still going on, and this—I think this was supposed to put an end to the rivalry. Exactly, That's, this should have ended at bad blood. So I'm, yeah, no, I, that match. Not, it's not Rhea's fault. It's not Liv's fault. Uh, I think it's kind of Raquel's fault. Maybe it's the production of it wasn't done right. Um, I just it, think it was poor production on like, yeah. people's part for this one. Because I mean, this match had all the potential in the world to like have great storyline and have great things going on for it, but it was just. Poor production and just I, I, overall, it's just not a great finish. Oh, this thing's getting heavy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Whatever. But anyway, and then yeah, we have the Finn Balor and Damian Priest match. I was so pissed that Finn didn't win this one. Yeah, I mean it was it was a it was a good match. Oh yeah, great match, but. Damien didn't need to win this. Damien, no, Damien didn't need to win this. Finn, Finn needed to win this, and at this point, why does the Judgment Day exist? Because they're, as far exactly. as I'm concerned, they're a bunch of losers. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I, I, I'm, I'm just sick and tired of Finn Balor being the sacrificial lamb for, for so many things. I mean, you've got a guy who, at one point, Triple H. Was the one pushing for him to be at the top, in the top title spot, and I, I get it. He doesn't necessarily need to be in the top title spot to 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 be a top guy. But darn it, is if it's not a waste of talent yeah. to have, like I said, to have Finn Balor basically being the the gatekeeper now, and let's say the sacrificial lamb, and losing to put other people over to try to get other people over. Like you can only do that for so long before that doesn't really work anymore. Like I don't want to see Finn Balor become the next Dolph Ziggler. No. Please no, because then he's gonna have to go over to uh, TNA or AEW and then work his magic there. Yeah, which I honestly, I, I don't mind him going to TNA. I don't mind him going to TNA, but I don't. Of uh, the places, I don't mind him going to TNA. I don't at want all. anyone to go to AEW at this point because no. I think it's pretty much just a like, you know, enjoy the enjoy the paycheck because your career will be over when the contract's over. Yep, <laughs> we'll have more to talk about that later on. Yeah, but. Uh, then of course you have the botch fest of the whole. Uh, Holy evening. poop! G- uh, Bailey and Nia Jax. I don't even want to give this any time. No, honestly, no. It, I mean, it was it a, was pretty much the exact same thing that we've always seen from Nia Jax. Terrible workmanship. Uh, I mean, just she can't even hit a Samoan drop correctly. That's what really set me off. It's like you are, quote unquote, related to the Samoan to, dynasty. Exactly. It's like, and yet you can't hit a Samoan drop correctly. Bailey hit a better Samoan drop in that match. I was than Nia just about did. to say the exact same thing. Like, if Bailey can hit a better Samoan drop than Nia Jax, then you maybe need to look at disowning her at some point in time, maybe yeah. sooner than later. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, and then I don't know if I want to give this enough time or not. But Triple H announcing the Crown Jewel Champion. I, no, I, no, see, I, I do want to give I, this one a little bit of time just because of the implication for storyline down the road. I mean, obviously. Okay, yeah. So I, I want to hear your thoughts on it because me personally, I don't really, I didn't really get it. I just didn't. I was like, what is this? Like, what significance does this have? It doesn't really have significance other than what you make of it. Like at the end of the day, nothing's significant until you make it significant. I mean, the King of the Ring wasn't significant until after a couple of them had happened, and then the King of the Ring, you know, people started identifying that as like the 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 pay per view or the tournament that where you crown your next top guy. You know, the Royal Rumble, you know, was just the Royal Rumble until it became the Royal Rumble uh, determined the main event at WrestleMania, like. A lot of these things don't mean anything until they do. 
Um, and depending on how you present them and depending on consistency and things like that, they can absolutely mean something. So, you know, can the crown jewel champion mean something? Yes and no. It, it will 100% depend on how they work it. Um, yeah, that's the thing. Like, how, how do you work that? And, like, how well, does that? Well, it's, it's okay. So it's very simple. It's, it's a champion versus champion match without unifying the titles, which is good because they, they don't need to unify. And, like, they've done this too many times where they've, they've, they've booked themselves into a corner where they eventually have to have a champion versus champion match. But that means title unification. And then they end up having a unified champion for a long time. Well, not time. necessarily because, I mean, you look at past Survivor Series, they've had champion versus champion on separate brands, but they never yeah, unified but, the but, titles. But that's exactly what they're doing here is the same thing, except Survivor Series is no longer for that. Survivor Series is for War Games now. So now See, you can See, that's have, where my beef is with Survivor Series. I, I love the War Games matches. Love it. But, but you it's think like, it's being overdone? I think it's being overdone. Yeah. But not the, yet. But still, not I, yet. They still have. They're still telling you. When when War Games starts to get to the point where where it did in WCW, where you've got the most random teams put together, and it doesn't really make sense why people are in it, then I'll I'll, I'll agree with you. Right. Um, but Bloodline versus Bloodline. Yeah, that's going to be the best. I would say that's going to be the best War Games of all time. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm all if for it. If they book it right. But and. and I have no reason at this point not to believe that they will book it right. Oh yeah, sure. But I mean, Crown Jewel is very simple. I mean, it's it's one of the it's one of the biggest payout pay per views that WWE has all year because they don't have to worry about the gate. They're guaranteed the gate, um, and so they are trying to figure out wh what to make of. Them. They've been trying to figure that out ever since they started doing it. Like they've had the, you know, at Crown Jewel they've had like the greatest Royal Rumble and they've had this and that. They had the the. Awful DX versus the Brothers of Destruction match. I don't even want to talk about um, that ever again. You know, they've and they, you know they had uh, you know in, in Saudi Arabia they've done quite a few things, and I you know I don't think anything's quite found its its niche yet. Um, but the title looks gorgeous. Yeah. Um, you have champion versus champion, so you, you have st you have just respect stakes in general. Then you have a title, but really it's the, the title is just kind of like more than a crown. You know, it's a talking piece. Um, I don't necessarily know how much the whoever wins it is going to carry it around, but as long as they can continue to call them the crown jewel champion over and over and over again, and, and as long as whoever wins it, you know, that's you know, we, it's 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 all about the Paul Heyman effect when you sit there and talk about it. Like when 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 the Undertaker lost to Brock Lesnar, that was a big deal. Yeah, but you know why it was a really really big deal because. Every time Brock Lesnar came out for one, two years at least, Paul Heyman came out and reminded the crowd every single time. Yep. And it did not let it didn't let it be ever become less important. If they can do that, then I think that just like the King of the Ring, the Royal Rumble, beating the Undertaker streak. Things like that can matter, but you have to make them matter. Just like a title, a title doesn't matter unless it's on the right person, and it's you know for the right reasons, you know. And we don't we don't want to ever cheapen I'd, things. I'd love to know what that reason is. I told you I'm a champion at life. Okay, here we are in the five star studios in my home. Regardless, uh, and then I drink the finest scotches, the finest bourbons, Cuban cigars. I mean, I was in Germany for Oktoberfest. Like I'm world traveled. Like I've got sweet baby blues. The ladies love me. I mean, yeah. What better champion to hold a title than than me? Than 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 this fantastic human being right here? But. Back back to the point. The Matt, the, the the whole segment with with Goldberg and and, Gun and Gunther was first of all I love that it's great because it has the callback to the Bill Goldberg uh, burn <laughs> yes. at Bret Hart and and then for Gunther to come and walk it back. Just fantastic heel work oh, by yeah. Gunther. Like he he is doing. He's just. He's, I mean, he's top tier right now. Oh yeah. I mean, every every sense of the word, he is just killing it every time he comes out there. See, and that's why I'm hoping that because with the work that he's doing right now, 
I don't think anybody needs to take the title off of him for a long, long and I don't, time. And I don't, I don't see this. And this is the thing. I don't think that Goldberg is going to take the title. Oh no, off no, no, no I'm not saying that either. I'm yeah, just talking about like just I, in general. What, my, what I think the purpose of that segment was is to Gunter to piss off Bill Goldberg, and Bill Goldberg is one of Saudi's favorite characters. Right. Bill Goldberg, Brock Lesnar, The Undertaker. Undertaker's retired. Brock Lesnar's busy peeing on people. And Bill Goldberg still has two or three matches, which he's been very upfront about. He has two or three matches left on his contract. So do I think he's going to have a match at Crown Jewel? No. But do I think you're going to have Gunter versus Cody Rhodes, which we, we kind of confirmed now after Monday Night Raw, Sami Zayn came close, but he didn't win it. So right. it's Gunter versus Cody Rhodes. They had their stare off at the end of at the end of Raw. How do you have a match like that without cheapening your ti- one of your titles and one of your champions? Well, I think getting speared by Goldberg is a perfectly good reason for Gunter to lose to Cody and be able to come out and be like, I was cheated. He doesn't lose his heat. And then he can have a match with Goldberg and beat Goldberg. And he's he's better off for it. Right. So booking wise. The only thing I don't like too much about that is that it's it's gonna be another one of those like three to five minute matches. I don't think so. I think that I think that it will not be ten minutes. I think it'll be I think it will probably be five to eight minutes. I think that Gunter is a good enough worker, and that's exactly why they're doing it the way they're doing it. Gunter is a good enough worker to walk Bill Goldberg through his hot spots. Yeah. Like true. just like when AJ Styles worked, you know, with uh, with Brock. Brock's very similar like get in, destroy, leave like up until that AJ Styles match, which that was in Saudi, wasn't it? No, I think that one was um I think it was at Survivor Series. Was that what it was at? I think so. Okay. Yeah, the Brock and AJ match. Yeah, yeah I think that was well yeah, I think it was Survivor Series. Okay. So, but like up until that point, like Brock had had some long matches, but like over his career, Brock's not a long match guy. Like he's done 20 minute and 30 minute matches, but that's not his his shtick. Um he's a power he's a power wrestler. That's exactly what he should do. But the best match that he's had save for one, you know, some of the matches that he's had with Roman and then like some of the matches that he had like earlier in his career when he had a little bit more, you know, youth and vigor and he was still doing the shooting star press. Um, AJ, you know, you have the right worker. You can have a guy who's a five minute match person and you can, you can do a 10 minute match and have it look believable and real and good. Gunter's going to, that's going to be a power match. Yeah. And Gunter's going to slap the crap out of Goldberg. Um, it's, it, but like I said, he's going to, he's going to give that match a little more motor than it would, than, you know, the Goldberg versus Braun Strowman, Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar, you know, just Goldberg get in, versus the fiend. Go, yeah. G- get in, destroy, leave, you know? <clears throat> so I, no, I liked it. I thought it was great. Um, cause like I said, I, I can, I can very much see how, where they're going with this because like, like I said, Goldberg is one of the Saudis favorites. Yeah. Like I know that like when they signed that That's con- the thing that just dry, that just blows my mind is that how much over he is oh, over in yeah. Saudi Arabia. Well, the, nothing it, against well, him because no, 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 I but, love but if, but if you if you look at like uh, what has been what the papers and everything, you know, all the information that comes out shows they're very much into the larger than life hulking characters. They like that old school 1980s 90s wrestler like the big like the Hulk Hogan, you know, Ultimate Warrior, Randy yeah. Savage, Lex Luger, Bill Goldberg, Brock Lesnar, Braun Strowman. They like the they're very much they like the cartoonishly large and right. aggressive characters. Right. I'll tell you who they don't like is they don't like Sami Zayn. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then finally we get to the main event of uh Bad Blood, Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns against the Bloodline uh, with Sol Sokoa and Jacob Fatu. I mean, we knew Jimmy was going to come back in this match, um, and then you called it, but I did. I didn't think it was going to happen. I just the thought prognosticator was, of prognosticators. Yeah, I'll give it to you. You had it, uh, and then The Rock comes back. I mean, this match was good, but the ending is what definitely brought it home for everything, by far. Yeah, Jimmy returning, and now we just move forward towards bad, uh, not bad blood, uh, Survivor Series. So, what is the one, two, three? Like, 
Did you catch any of that? Like when the rock? Yeah. Did, like, um, do you have any idea what? Like, are we supposed to know? And I'm old and I forgot something. I tried to go, like go back and watch that and see if that made any sense about anything. But honestly, I don't really know what that means. Right. I'm, not, I'm not sure either. And then, he, like you said, he cuts a promo um, outside the arena or goes through the arena and then you know, the back part and then into the outside near the semis. And he, Which I thought know, was hilarious. I thought the, it was the great. The reference to John Cena. And the, yep, go eat some Fruity Pebbles. I love it. <laughs> um, he cuts the promo. And, I mean, he, like, I guess he was being, like, intentionally vague because the, 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 the analyst is asking him the question of, of what were you? What were you saying? You know, what? Sh- what? What are you here? How are you feeling? What did you think about that match? And he's like, I'll tell you when it's time for you to know. Right. So, I, you know, I, it's going to be one of those where you know we probably. I, guess, I don't think that Rock's going to be part of War Games. No, he's not. Um, I, I think at this point, having Sammy lose to Gunter. Sammy no longer is in the IC title race. Sammy's no longer in the world title race. He doesn't have a whole lot to do right now, so it would be a perfect fit for the original bloodline to reunite Roman Reigns, Jimmy and Jay, and Sammy. And man, am I ready for the 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 wise man to return. Yes. Like I it's will It's gonna happen. I love Jimmy. Don't get me wrong. But I will pop more when Heyman returns than when Jimmy returns. Oh, yes. Um, but now, the question is, how are they going to convince Jay to join the fray? Because, I mean, that's ultimately, that's how you got to think that's going to be. I think that's going to be the story, you know, between now. I mean, they, they have. So, what, what are we? It's it's second week of October right now. And the so War Games is the last week or weekend of November. Right. So, we, we have some time. Now, do we think that Jay's still going to be champion uh, by War Games, or do we think that he's going to drop the title back to Braun? Or, uh, yeah, Braun Breaker. I don't know. I would venture to say that Jay will be titleless when we get to War Games. That's what I'm hoping I for. Think, I think Braun's going to get that title back, and maybe maybe Braun gets the title back because of interference from the other bloodline. And that, that be, will be one of the things that drives Jim Jay back into the arms of Jimmy and Roman, and and, and then also if Sammy's if Sammy enlists, like I said, I, I don't know who'll be the biggest holdout. If it's gonna if it's gonna be Sammy, I assume that J, the story will I have think, Jay being the biggest holdout. Yeah, I think Jay and will that, be the biggest and that one. Jay won't agree until we are either Monday or the Monday before War Games. Or the Friday, the, the the Friday before the la- like the go home week, right? Um, like my guess is, yeah, we'd probably see it on the SmackDown, and then have m- one Raw and one SmackDown before War Games starts, where they're united. Well, no, I'll say that Monday will probably be where they uh, figure out if uh, they're going to have the, the original Bloodline on there, because Friday you'll have to have the Advantage match, like which team is going to be able to have their first man in. Yeah. On, uh, in well, the that's match, why so. I said that's why I actually said the other SmackDown because then it gives them a whole week. It's not like yeah, Monday. It's, it's not like Monday and then Friday. Like it, that, that seems just a little rushed. I, I mean, know, they, I feel they like could, they feel could like totally Monday. do it. They could totally. Right. I'm just I like I like it when things can breathe. I got I got you. I mean, I just feel like Monday would be a good setup, and then Fridays where you can breathe and just kind of just talk about or just let it build and let it fester, and then then you have it on Saturday, and yeah. then from there. The sky's the limit. But it is going to happen. It's going to be Bloodline versus Bloodline at Survivor Series War Games, and it is going to be... Too the, sweet. I was going to say the best one, but I'll give you that. Too, too sweet. sweet. Anyway, guys, now it's time for some high spots. Beep. And botches. <laughs> well, I had a little bit of oomph on that last one. A little wet one at the end. Yeah, I was say, got a little spit in my eye. There's a little extra Taco Bell on the diet. But anyway... Uh, as far as high spots go, what have you got for this week? Because I know we weren't able to record uh, yesterday, but so we were able to catch last night for Monday Night Raw. Speaking of high spots, I had some gummies here. No, I mean, no, never mind. Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> we, don't, we don't need to talk about that right now. <laughs> I think but. Taco Bell sounds pretty nice, too. Okay. <laughs> we'll start um, a band? Huh? we we'll start a band? <laughs> anyway, uh, what you got for high spots this week? Oh, let's see. So, I mean, at this point, we're working on uh, Monday. So, uh, the, I mean, bad blood. Bad blood was fantastic. Right. Um, the, 
the promos, the promo between CM Punk and Drew McIntyre, you know, that I mean, you really there's really nothing any that could top that could top that. Yeah, I, I have uh, that as one of mine too. Yeah, the I, Monday yeah. on Monday Night Raw last week that that promo uh, was, um, I mean, whew, like between it's like between like like two weeks ago you had Cody and Roman in the in the stadium, and then you have like there's just so much good promos going on, and as someone who's I love professional wrestling, but I love the stories. Yeah. The storytelling. I mean, that's a part of it, too. Like the storytelling all- has gotten so good. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Um, yeah, no. It was – that that, pro- that promo was fantastic. Uh, and then I'm trying to think. There was the, – the match uh, – dang, what was it? Dude, 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 dude. Was it, was it WWE or AEW? It was it was WWE. I'm I'm getting old. I'm losing my memory. I'm not going to waste any time. But so I'll just give the one, and I'll say yeah. It was the promo between CM Punk and Drew McIntyre in the cage. Was I mean they they did it in the cage that every part of that was just fantastic, it was absolutely amazing. And to all those people that were giving them flat because they weren't bringing back the red cage. It's like who what? gives a rat's behind, like. You know, like remember the previous Hell in a Cell matches where they had like the red cage. But why did you like the red cage? I didn't I, like the no, red no, cage. No, I'm talking about people on the internet were like giving them. If flag. you're on the internet and you want the red cage, lick a butt, go home to your mama, and pay rent. You freaking loser. Yeah, we don't want the red cage. That's why you have color. That's why you make the person bleed. That's what gets the red cage. I bet you, if you like the red cage, I bet you like the Punjabi prison match. Gosh, ne- never. I'm begging for WWE to hear this. Never, ever, ever. Okay, why, TJ? Bring the Punjabi prison match back again. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Never. The Punjabi prison match and the Red Hell in a Cell is the equivalent of doing ass to mouth. And you don't do ass to mouth. Okay. You were doing so well and now I'm having to censor it. Yeah, no, but you don't do that. Okay? No. You you don't. But anyway, um as far as high spots go, I like the new Intercontinental Championship look that uh Jay it's brought out sli- on Monday. It's slightly better. Yeah. I, I still well, don't still, like that title. I, yeah, it's the overall design is still not as good, but I do like that he's paying homage to the original. Now, I'll tell one. you a title that I do like the design of. This beautiful right here with the diamond studs right here. We got the five with wrapped around with the stars, the embosing. I mean, classic bolts, snaps, you know, no Velcro. This isn't a child's toy. This is a champion's belt. You hear that? Real. Bold. Anyway, uh, I thought that was a good uh, like paying tribute to the original IC title. Uh I love that the heel Miz is back, mm-hmm. finally. Finally turning on our truth and now we get to see the Miz that we all know and love. Well, he's still not like the- fully heel Miz because I say if you see him on Raw, like he's still like entertaining the ridiculousness of our truth. Like he's upset, well, but he's he's not a heel right now. Like he is just oh, he will be. To me right now he's justifiably irritated. Like if I'm the Miz, and our truth is constantly putting me in matches with like uh, Bronson Reed, Braun Strowman, like matches I don't want to be in that do not help me and cause causing us the championship titles to lose them. Like he's is he really a heel? Like to me, he's justified. Like our truth, I, I can see that, but we I mean, love still, him. I we love, love him, but he's a buffoon. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. And so that's what we that's what we love about him. But if I'm saying like every once in a while the buffoon has to be, you know, like a dog that craps on the carpet. You got to put their nose in it. Yeah, I'll, I'll give him that. Um, and then another one of mine that I, I mean, I'm I was excited for it to happen in the moment, but it's going to turn into dog crap eventually. Uh, the fact that Shelton Benjamin is all elite. Yeah, I I, I liked to see uh, MVP and Shelton Benjamin because I I don't think Shelton can succeed by himself. He just doesn't have 
he's not compelling on the microphone, but you put him with MVP uh, and you build maybe with some of the monochromatic opposites of us. Oh my gosh. I don't know. Good, what to, good, I, good, no, good say. I don't know what to say. I don't know what's the right thing to say. Is So most of the time I just, you know, say nothing. Yeah. Um, That's the best thing to do. Yeah. Especially in your case. I'm talking to the champ, son. Um, but I, I definitely think that they could, they could do something with it. Now it's AEW, so I'm working with like a three percent of of hope. That's what I was saying. Like I was excited in the moment, and yeah. I popped whenever I saw it happen. But at the same time, it's AEW. Yeah, all good things will come to an end at some point, yep. and a lot sooner than later. Uh, as far as botches go, what have you got for botches this week? Uh, Osprey versus Ricochet. Uh, the ending. Yeah, I was about to say the match was the fantastic. Ma- they, were having loved- a, they were having a fantastic match. Uh, there were I mean, so they- many spots that they called back to the original match. Yeah, they, I they, loved they, it. they were doing some really great storytelling. Like if you've gone and if you've watched, like if you if you've never seen Osprey and Ricochet together, you probably just thought it was another. AEW style match. And, Go back and yes, and watch there's it. a lot of it, but there's a lot of callbacks to their previous matches, and it's it's very cool. It's very good. Uh, I knew it wasn't gonna be the full match because like, why would you put that on a dynamite, like a regular Wednesday dynamite? No. Nah. And so I was I mean, I was waiting for the shoe, you know, the other shoe to drop, and sure enough, in the form of Kanosuke Takeshita, who I could not give three turds about. No at this one point. cares about Kanosuke Takeshita, so why are you still trying to shove him down our throats, AEW? Yeah, he he's not compelling. No. Like he's there's nothing about him that stands out. Like in a world of Kenny Omegas, of Ricochets, of Will Ospreys, like uh, you know, as far as like we're talking about workmanship, I'm not even like I'm not even gonna sit there and talk about like mic skills and stuff like that and talk about like MJFs and stuff like that. But in a world full of like phenomenal workers who can have five star matches just about every single time they put they step in the ring, why do I give a crap about Kadoske Takeshita? I don't. And then like the only thing that you, you ever did right was you gave him a mouthpiece, but he doesn't even like I don't really get to like there's, they're not really doing anything that makes any sense or of any value. See, that's the thing. Like, like, there's not a single faction in AEW right now that has any merit or has anything in, that I can invest in at all. No. Not the Young Bucks and their little group or whatever with Jack Perry and, uh, oh gosh, the Rainmaker, uh, Okada. Okada. Nothing with uh, Malachi Black and his group. Nothing with the conglomeration. Nothing with anything that these guys are doing. Yeah, makes apparently any sense the, to me at all. Apparently the the undisputed kingdom is still technically a thing. Like they came out and it, like they still had the like the like, the branding on there. I was like, are we serious right now? Yeah, apparently so. But yeah, I mean, yeah, that whole thing was just ridiculous. And then of course, the ring breaking with the uh last monster standing match. I had that as one of my botches. Yeah. Because I mean the thing is if you're going to have the ring break, you want to have like a bigger impact with how much you've built up this match every single week. Or not every single week, but like pretty much leading up to the match. I you knew, want to have... I knew that was going to happen, though. Right. I mean, I, I saw it coming, too, because, I mean, whenever we saw it the previous when week... They, well, yeah, when they, te- but when they teased the vertical suplex, I was like, they're going to do the Brock Lesnar big show. Yeah. Like, but, but, I mean, still, the, if the fact that they've built this match up so much to where you've got these like colossal human beings going against each other and you're building up the ring breaking at some point you want to have like a bigger Im- impact than what it did like pretty much just two ring posts just went pop and that was it yeah yeah i mean it wasn't like it was it wasn't as good as i say when when they had the brock big show uh ring explosion yeah um but i still i mean i still liked it and i and i do like that finish for those big men like that cuz um we still had an ending you know, it wasn't like the ring exploded and they just called the match because it was the last monster standing match. So they didn't just go, oh, the ring's busted. It's like, no, the ring busted. Who gives a crap? Uh, and then for Seth Rollins to come out and deliver a curb stomp on the steps. Yes. And Braun to win. You know, like I thought it was I thought it was really well done. Uh, and then, of course, you have Seth come out yesterday night and Monday night, I'll say, for whoever's listening at what time and when. Um and delivered the really, really great promo. Yes. You know, that close-up promo with the camera. Um, like, I know your name now. Like, like you've got my full attention. You have my full attention. Um, I thought I thought it was a really great promo by Seth. And I'm, 
I'm actually interested in a Bronson Reed storyline. So yeah. I can't say they've done anything wrong because they've taken my opinion on, on somebody who I had zero interest in, and now I have at least some level of interest, and that's what booking and stories are supposed to do. Exactly. Yeah. Overall, just the ring breaking, the Osprey and Ricochet ending, and then I had the uh, promo from Friday that had Tiffany, Stratton, Bailey, and Nia Jax. That was a cluster you-know-what and then some. Really, anything with Nia Jax is going to be... I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. You know why this is not on my botch? Because I fast-forwarded it. Yeah, honestly, I should have, too. (laughs) I should have done it, but you know what? I just wanted to see what came out of it or what would come from it. But, yeah, it was absolutely everything that I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Absolute garbage. But anyway, guys... That's our episode for this week. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you for listening. Like we said before, you can find us on all social media platforms. We're on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. You can see all of our content from our channel and commentary content as well. And you can find us on all podcast streaming platforms, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere podcasts are streamed, we are there. And I'm just going to remind you of the upcoming events that are going to be going on pretty soon, and I'm going to try and get through it as fast as I can. I'm not going to do it one breath because I don't trust this idiot here to not chop me in the chest whenever I do it. Anyway... Upcoming events, October 12th, The Guardian's Legacy presents The Fallen at Rosenwald High School Gym in Panama City, Florida. Doors open at 6, bell time is at 7. If you want ticket information, go to www.theguardianslegacy.com. October 16th, Hope Championship Wrestling will be at Tabernacle Baptist Church in Bedalia, Georgia. Doors open at 6, and it is a free event. If you want information on this event, go to their uh, social media page. Also, October 26th. Kraken Pro Wrestling will be at the Mott Littman Gym in Tiffin, Georgia. Doors open, or sorry, the bell time is at 7 p.m. For more information, go to their social media page. And November 9th, SRCW Solid Rock Championship Wrestling will be presenting their ninth annual anti bullying event at the Thomas County Middle School in Thomasville, Georgia. Doors open at 5 30, bell time is at 6. And again, marquee individuals at this event Georgia alum and NFL star Ray Drew. Missy Hyatt, the former First Lady of Professional Wrestling, and the masterpiece, Chris Adonis. A lot of great things happening. It's going to be some fantastic events going on. You don't want to miss out on it. You forgot another celebrity that's going to be at the uh, SRCW event. Who? The five-star champion, me. Oh, my gosh. Like, you won't even let me, like, touch it. Or, like... No touchy. What are you talking about? Just, like, just let me hold... No, touchy. Just for like one second, okay? No. Oh my gosh. Okay. But anyway, guys, like we always like to say, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. But as always, keep it five stars. Like just for 10 seconds. Like, just-